Ladies and gentlemen, how you all doing? This is Connell Work. And I'm Angry. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, today for your viewing pleasure, we go down to Division 3 of the SD2 League Season 4 matchup. Here on Orshi East, Rang, who do we have? On the left hand side in blue, we have ourselves a Wonder Noob playing as the 21st Panzer Division with a Maverick Income. On the right hand side in red, we have an Angry Bird playing the 3rd Guard Tank Corps. Also, we have a Maverick income. See, you and I were talking a little bit about, uh, just before we went live here, Maverick teams have a higher incidence rate. Um, why is that? At least, at least as the of late, the last couple of changes. Income is like pretty good in comparison to the other like B phase incomes for the other income choices. Yes, you do only get A, C, and a, a C phase, which is pretty terrible. But if you can make that B and A phase work, you do have the points to do that. You can do some pretty good work. And in one of the ones, you can definitely be like more of an aggressive A phase, B phase, and do a decentest job. Just as long as you have some C phase spam. Because you're always going to need C phase spam. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the thought just hit me as I was looking over here at uh, Wonder Noob's deck. I really kind of wish there was an occasion by which you could somehow put the bunkers into play. I yeah. know it's something that it's it's so it seems so silly that you invest so much time being like ah now what bunkers do I want to bring in, and then no one plays breakthrough because it's not a very good game mode. No, no, I, I mean, yeah. hey, hat, hats off them for trying something a little bit different, but that yeah, yeah, I know no it's, it's kind of sad because it's like a pretty cool mechanic to the game. Absolutely. But see, there've been people been asking for emplacements since goddamn raw game, and they finally do it, but no one uses it because the game mode for it is pretty bad. Up north, we're seeing a bit of a uh, flame war going on. True, but it looks like Wonder Noob is is definitely getting the worst part of that trolling. Uh, his pioneers up front, yeah, these guys are gonna go down super fast, but they will give a moment for these brave brave flamen for squads to ver flamen another day. Yeah, and just having that one flamethrower troop alive is definitely going to help out in that CQC firepower. And, yeah, it's a pretty good push with Mangri. He does have the Shaman backing him up and a bunch of guards to guard you out for us. Well, looking down to the south, actually, we are going to see one of those captured American Shermans aboard the Sherman put some extensive fire over here on the open Machiki in that town. Um, kind of embarrassing that the guards have been able to keep these peak grants at bay. I mean, mm -hmm. these are good peak grants. These are not, like... You know, your vanilla, I'm not going to give you any kind of anti-tank weapon pegrins. Yeah, and in close quarters like like his pegrins don't really have the firepower disparity that they'd normally have against guards at longer range, so... And I also think this Yorkman Shiki is helping out a lot by flaming anything who dares get close. No, actually, as we're watching, one Sherman fired a 45mm and the other m probably sitting back and going to be engaging his counterpart pretty soon as well. Oh... Uh, Kind of surprised that we don't see too many IS-2s over here from this particular third tank of core. Yeah, it's definitely more of a regular Sherman spam. Only one card of IS-2s, and then leader ones at Yat, which is pretty interesting play from Angry Bird. I mean, the Shermans are very good, but he's definitely going to be lacking a little bit of heavy ATL later on. He only has this three guns for like more heavy anti-tank, apart from those three IS-2s. Mm -hmm. And as we saw in Runter Noob's deck, he's got goddamn King Tigers. So, if one of those come out, it's not going to be fun. No, it is not. I mean, anything goddamns are pretty bad. So, I mean, like, mm -hmm. that's, that's going to be terrifying no matter what. Yeah. It is always funny, by the way, to watch a Sherman get taken out by another Sherman cannon, just because you would think that the armor would just be bouncing it all day. But, yeah. what do I know? I'm just a caster. It must be really confusing for both sides. Like, hey, you got a Sherman, but re got a Sherman. How did you get your Sherman? <laughs> oh, the Americans just gave us ours. Oh, we had to steal it. Huh. Well, it's like the, the lunchtime bullies by comparison. Mm -hmm. uh, just watching up north as this one brave Pegren gets just absolutely bum-rushed by, what, like two platoons of troops? Like, I feel terrible yep. for that, man. Yeah, I'm going to go a lone little auto cannon half track. Going to try and keep the guard squad at bay, but the Shermans will be enough to ward off. Absolutely. Ooh. I didn't see that pack 30 back, 38 back there, and neither did that one Sherman. Mm-hmm. But not enough to get the kill and blow. And it probably won't be... I mean, it can blow up a Sherman, but it's not It's not like a pack 40 where it will instantly blow it up. Probably not. Interestingly, 
off map 105 coming on in. And I'd say this 88 back here as well. And kind of a, an interesting oh. call. Uh, we're seeing one of the few IL-2s being brought on in here, and up to the north, there's going to be really no coverage whatsoever. So I imagine... Yep, he's going for the Pioneer. Yep, this is going to be ugly pretty yeah. quick. Yeah, it's really interesting bringing in that 88, not just because he brought an 80 really early on, but he put it in a very defensive role, anti-aircraft position. Exactly. I mean, you see when he brings something like that, you want to have it on the front line to pop Sherman's out. I mean, you could at least get, like, what, four to five Shermans per 88 on average if I check the exchange rate correctly. Yeah, I think I think that's right. That's a, That was the 42 exchange rate. So, ooh, IL-2 uh, dying, though, just after one bomb run. Oof. Not a great investment overall. That is 100 points down the drain for very little to show for it. Yeah, and Angry is definitely going to need to invest in getting anti air because he has no dedicated fighters. He does have Yak-7B rocket planes, which can act as fighters once you drop. But mm -hmm. still, he doesn't have a whole lot of air superiority. But same thing with 21st Panzer. True, but the 21st Panzer, I think, has better tank... Well, better anti-vehicle, for one. And I feel like their, their fighter plans are going to be a lot better, by comparison. Yeah, the Fokker 190 is a pretty lovely little... Well, pretty big aircraft, I should say. This definitely seems to be the case. But up to the north... I mean, it, it is 1311 in favor of mm -hmm. Angerbird over Wonder Noob. Which is kind of interesting, because I... I always expect the 21st Panther to be a little bit stickier early on. Yeah, I, f I think it's really just because Angry Bird does have his Northern Forest under control. True. And then the rest of the map is pretty evenly split 50-50. So I'm thinking for Ronda, his best bet is to probably try to push down south or maybe continue Central Assault. Because it's usually pretty hard to retake that Northern Forest once you lose it. Well, that's why he's got a lot of artillery. That's why he's got the 105 in the center, though, and he actually has a mortar track as well. So, yep, here's the first barrage. I'm going to go in the next 40 seconds. Yep. Um, very speculative reinforcement with these airsets troop and MP grins. Look to see this this reinforcement column try to follow up on this artillery barrage. Yes. Gonna be a little bit. Of, gonna be a bit, a bit of a tough sell though, because that Sherman right there. There's two Shermans right there. While they take a little bit of morale damage, they're gonna be rather undaunted. I would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's only 105 millimeters, so it's not all the outlaws. And even then, like runs on Eve's current infantry force in the front line is just getting shredded by the machine gun firepower. And here we have the wet noodle contest. All right. Yeah. But first barrage comes on in. Yep. At least if nothing else, it does arrest the Soviet momentum. Mm-hmm. Stuns up the attacking infantry at least. Yes. Yes. Now, regrettably, he's not going to have the troops just right there in time. We actually have a 37 mil being brought on in, which... Okay. I, I might be a little bit bold by always suggesting this, but I feel like the 37 mil should be put on the edge of that hill, on the road, on the crest of the hill. I wouldn't I wouldn't stick it in the canyon there. Am I wrong by saying that? Uh, I understand there's a, a certain little. situation. There's a, there's a bit of a situational kind of analysis, I'm sure, behind that. But I feel like I always want to have my 37 mils at least have some opportunity I to see, support the I town. I see what you mean, because you kind of want like the high ground and the support, but mm -hmm. I think you want to keep those things a little bit more protected, because once they get spotted and they get shot at by direct ground fire, they just melt away because, you know, anti-aircraft guns do take up 50% damage bonus to things that aren't airplanes. That's, that's fair, that's fair. Yeah. But I, I do know. know what you mean, because, you know, shooting stuff from 37mm cannon usually solves a decent amount of problems, especially if they're not armored. Well, and, and that's the thing, isn't it? Like, I just feel that, that there is so much opportunity to get a real bit of usage out of your anti-air platforms. Like, like right now, we have, what, another IL-2 coming in? Yep, another, so another, points, another 100 points coming in, he's going to drop bombs on here. And yes, it's possible that 37 mil might be able to keep away the Focke Wolf, but like, now we have this 88 over here too. Like, yep. you might as well get some more purpose out of your aircraft. Excuse me, by your anti-air. Excuse oh. me. Yeah, I think with anti-air, like the anti-air, which is good to put in the front line, I find are either like those single 20 mil guns because they're just cheap, mm -hmm. or anything of AP such as. Like the big anti-aircraft guns or the Hungarian things with the 40 millimeter AP shells, which just devastate tanks. Oh, you're not feeling the SDK I've said uh, seven once. Uh, no, it's like it, 
No, no, it was, it was more. Hung... Oh. No, no, was, no. You're absolutely right. That was like the, the Nimrod wannabe. Nimrod, yeah, it's the Nimrod, and then the Finns have like the same thing because it's uh -huh. technically a Swedish vehicle. But I'm more of looking at the, the the quad twenty mils. I mean, I feel like again. Oh yes. That right there. That's a prime anti infantry thing. Stick that outside mm -hmm. of a town. Standoff weapon, 400 meters, 500 meters, that's going to shred and give a lot of great support. And I feel like sometimes yep. we get so blinded on the idea of, no, this is anti-air. Uh, yeah, it's just very risky and very yeah. costly. That's true. You, you do pay like that premium of having it also being able to shoot aircraft. True, true, that's fair. Um, up to the north, mortar track is trying to assert itself into that forest, but without any kind of real visibility. Uh, it, this really is a definition of hit or miss. Yeah, and it's mainly missing. I do like how he does have a mortar half track here because you can always, you can never go wrong using mortar half tracks. And if you are going to take back this northern forest, it's going to require a lot of indirect explosives firepower. Yes. And Ursatz Trooper, that team. You probably need a little bit more than Ursatz Trooper, I think. True. True, true, true. Now, the town has basically fallen under uh, Wonder Noob's control, at least for the moment, but of course, Ursatz Trooper, we know what a waste those things can be. Uh, but, like you preach constantly to me, the Gospel of Rang says that on the third day when ye shall want to hold territory, one throws in disheartened troops. And I get that. Mm -hmm. So, I, I'm trying to pray to the Holy West Eastern Front. Um, yes, that was the West Eastern Front. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, 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 he, and here we are, actually, have this one brave boy to Sherman fighting off against Len Lee Shermans. So, yep, as you expect, the capture stuff ain't as good as the originals. Mm -hmm. um, and at long last, actually, we have an early Koenigstiege over here into Phase B, two P4s, and a huge swath of infantry that's being thrown into this town. And this last barrage, I think, is being desperately used here to kind of keep the Soviets at bay. And it's going to hit just yeah. in time to have these guards hit the, hit the field, too. So this is rather fortunate timing. I'm really looking forward to see how his KT actually performs. It's not very often we see it in 1v1s because it is a huge bloody point sink. But considering Angry Bird's deck... Hey, I think Angry Red is going to have a very hard time dealing with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And short of, short of any kind of flank um, shot, it's not going to go particularly well. Yeah. I My... think Renzo Noob is going to place it in a bit more of an aggressive position as he's putting it slap bang in the center, it seems. Or well, that, defensively uh, in the center for now. At that point, I'm concerned slightly because of the, of the Rosvedkas. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, very concerned about that. Looking down to the south, rather interesting. This southern town, usually with just such a hot bit of activity, just has a couple of airsoft chupin, you know, flirting a bit with some guard squads. But the guard squads, they're not having it. Those DPs and those the PP shots are going to keep airsats at a uh, bit of a range here. Yeah, Penny IO2 is definitely going to finish off the job. Yeah, yeah, it will. And here's 37 mil getting some getting some activity here. Mm -hmm. Um, but the 88, he's getting some smoke. Shockingly enough, not getting a kill there just yet. Some of the infantry is finding itself getting slain as it moves forward here. P uh, P4 is starting to engage the Sherman from great range here. Yeah, but the Sherman does have those lovely free self veterancy bonuses, which help out a lot in a firefight like this. Yes. Yes, I wouldn't be surprised to watch both these P4s die before the KT really gets aggressive. Yeah. And now's the time to be aggressive at KT. He needs to knock out your Shermans. And it is Desperately. Uh, I thought he's going to move it. But yeah, losing both Panzer 4 Gs is not ideal. Because this is really halting Ronda Noobs versus yes. two bloody Shermans. Yes. Well, and, and it's just the, just the threat of having tanks in the area. Even keeping the KT in the area, you concentrate so much of your opponent's ordnance on the area. So much of it is his focus, really. But yeah. I guess I guess he's a little bit concerned because if you bring in those seventy six um, Zisses, which which in phase B he's got what a six pack of yeah a six pack of them, that can cause some hassle for the KT. It won't be it won't be easy of course, but you can definitely crit him out or just pound him to death. Yeah, if he gets get enough firepower, you can definitely do that. But I do like how he's bringing in the seven slash one SDK. I've said mm -hmm. I think he's gonna try to keep out pretty close to the KT as his personal anti aircraft guard. Which is a good call, because I would like to be guarded by 420mm calm. Yeah, exactly. I, I would really in enjoy that. Like, screw actually hiring actual bodyguards if you're actually a celebrity. Why don't you just have someone follow you around with a flag villain? 
No one's going to approach you. That's true. There's paparazzi. You're definitely going to keep out of range. Ooh, here's going to be interesting. IS-2 has it the field and Whoa. one shots the freaking KT. <laughs> that was a lot less interesting than I was hoping for, I have to admit. Same. Same. That was really anticlimactic. That's what I loved. But oh. that, that's a good trade for Angry Bird because Angry Bird has two IS-2s and Runs and Noob has three KTs, so... There's only two more possible KTs left, and with his extra tanks and infantry, Angry Bird is going to be able to, like, move on through unmolested. Perversely, I feel like had the KT been on the road a lot earlier, he might have had a better chance. Yeah, I just came down to who could shoot who first, and the IS-2 was, you know, he had the big iron on his hip. Well, and he had a lot more blade of armor for that matter, too. Yeah, and a, yeah, technically a bigger gun as well. 128 is bigger than 88. True. If I remember my math. And true, well, that's some quick math right there. Mm hmm. Um, check it out to the north. You can see over here, this is the, the distance in my particular window. Um, it, it's continuing to have that, that slap fight back and forth. Uh, Mortar Half Track still has some rounds. I'm surprised he's not been just throwing all of those away, but I guess. Oh no, he's got plenty of Opal Blitzes. Why the heck is he not bringing an Opal Blitz? Just have the thing just constantly be firing. Interesting. Uh, PE2 getting engaged in a second. He's going to probably die from something. Come on, blow up. Ronnie's blow up, goddammit. There we go. There we go. You know, Rang, I'd like to point out, you're the reason I have to go and put the uh, profanity blockers on uh, on my YouTube videos. <laughs> that's, why, that's why the kids can't watch our stuff. Um, I know, I know. We should always want to learn them a little bit more World War II history out there. Um, P going to the north, starting to push back slightly against those guards, but like you said earlier, consequence of really just being so stinking heavy. Oh, wait a second. JU88 in the center. He's making a carpet bomb on three Shermans. Oh my gosh. What I mean, the fuck? Yeah, jeez. I'm, ki I'm kidding, by the way. You feel free to swear as much yeah. as you want to. Oh, no, no. I was, I was like about to. Like, that, that pilot needs to be. I would say send him to the Russian maybe front, not, but he's already maybe not there. Sure, yeah. You yeah, know, he's kind of already unlucky, so we'll let him live for now. <laughs> they want those catch twenty two things. Okay, guys, send him out for more mm. missions. <laughs> yeah, imagine doing poorly on the like you know on the Western front, the punishment was being sent to the Eastern front. Why would they punish you if you're already on the Eastern front? Would they just shoot you at that point? Well, if you're a Soviet at that point, they'd send you to Finland. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was and I'm, I'm only partially kidding. Finland was considered to be a death sentence for so many people. They used to just send them there. Um, mm -hmm. Germans? That's a good question. What do you think? I don't know. I just think at that point they'd probably get shot or just sent to more suicidal missions until eventually they get shot by the enemy. You mean the entire Eastern Front wasn't a suicidal mission? Oh, that's a good point. Well, I guess, I guess you know, Hitler thought he had a good chance. <laughs> Yeah, he thought he had many good chances every year, but it just keep getting scrounged. Oh, man. Oh, a typhoon, a citadel. I'm sorry. I said, I'm, planet. I'm looking at all these just the airsoft troops being brought in, and this is not the kind of material that you want to be seeing. Yeah. He's got... This is kind of... Yeah. He's got enough... Oh, no. Cause he, okay. So the, okay. All right. So here's the reason. He's, he's, is, yeah. But he's got the Koenigsteiger, he spent all, he sunk all of his points there, he needs infantry in the center, so he's still bringing in airsofts from phase A. Which I think is a waste, but, you know, that's just me. Um, ooh, and a one, off map 172. Okay. That might have a little bit more efficacy than our 105 companion from earlier. Mm -hmm. But, I, yeah, right, like, I had the troop and I just... Not really that good. I mean, considering, like, a guard squad... It's like five points more, and it's not disheartened, and it has much more firepower and anti-tank capability, makes it a much more useful unit to spam rather than us at troop. And yes. uh, 21st Panzer, you're pretty, you pretty much do have to take us as troop, and you don't have a lot of regular infantry to begin with, and the slots are pretty expensive. So, yeah, it's it's a difficult situation to be in, especially in a such a CQC area. Well, this first 172 barrage is not getting quite as much effect. There we go. Finally getting some some kind of material going in. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Was it the 41? That's just... No. Couldn't have been. 
But that's going to give uh, Angry Bird a very lovely position as he's now King of the Hill and he's got a 59 point advantage. So that plus two is pretty beneficial for him. And for both sides being Maverick, I have the same income. So it's not really going to matter. It's just going to slow things down, actually. Which is good for Angry Bird. True. And since now we're into Space C, though, here's where we get some of those, I would say two star, right? Yeah, I guess two, two Soviet star. Sherman's coming on in a couple, well, one to the north, not the center, because he's got the M2 combat in as well to kind of give everybody that buff. Mm -hmm. Which, I'm not saying it's a renaissance, but we definitely have seen some more kind of combat officers in the last few weeks here. Is that going to be an indication of actually having some command and control, or is that just kind of one of those hit or miss opportunities? Uh, it's just because Angry Bird wants to command and conquer. Um... You know, I, I would go and give you some sort of, like, joke to, you know, ally myself with you, but all I have to do is just kind of nod, you know. Is it just, is that just, like, thing in a red alert in your head? It is, it is. I'm actually, I can see Tim Curry right now just kind of screaming at me, but, um, <laughs> he's, he's, he's already gone to the only safe place, the moon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, one oh, of the best man. lines ever delivered in any piece of media. It was just, and one of the strangest pieces of cameos in like in any kind of computer game. Like, why? Yeah. Why? It's so it's so great in that line because you can see just before he says the the space, he's like cracking up a little bit. It's like, oh my god, I can't. <laughs> what did you? <laughs> I know. Oh. It's like it's oh. like acting in the movie yeah. Iron Sky. How could you not have like have an issue with having like space Nazis? Like. Yeah. Red Ugh. Alert 3 is a goddamn gem in terms of acting. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Some people play their roles so hard, it's funny. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the moment right now, Wonder Noob, well, he, he's playing a different role. He's playing, you know... Oh, well, I want to catch an Angry Bird. Um, 14 10, he's getting back a little bit of, of opportunity here. But the major problem is he, he's not deployed his air power particularly effectively. And the consequence of that is the 37 mils, but also now we have an 85 mil, we have another 37 mil behind, we have an 85 mil. We have an anti-air interdiction zone entirely across the center. Nothing's making it in. Yeah, which is perfect for Angry Bird, because really his major threat against IS-2, I'd say, is those JU-88s. Because he has it in a very lovely defensive position, just to pretty much hold the town. He's not going to push it up any further, because you don't want to risk actually fighting the King Tiger head-on. He got pretty lucky the first time. And all he has to do is hold onto the hill, and he is, he's doing that pretty well. I mean, he has a troop and a run up, but they can't get past the Sherman rule. True. It is more difficult to play combat of the, of the hill, because the hill at that point belongs to everyone. Mm-hmm. Especially was watching. the dead. Oh. Ooh, yeah, that got kind of dark, but yeah. that's probably pretty true. I know, it's, yeah. So World War II was not a fun war. Uh, just looking down to the south real quick. There's been very little activity here, but we are seeing an attempt to maybe get some tanko dis on Nikki. Maybe, yep. Here's 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 a little bit of a cheeky anti. You know, it's been it's it's been too quiet. Let's just put it that way. It's been too quiet here mm -hmm. in the center. You can see it now. Tanko dis on Nikki half track support. Definitely see something going on here. IL two in the meantime, I don't know if he's gonna be able to deliver rounds on target. He will, never mind. The JU88 with it with very little to do otherwise. Takes out a Rinky Dink Emcha and by accident takes out an Okamachiki. Oh. Nice. Third Koenig Steger to the south, by the way. There we go. She has uh, the last run, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's at a pretty good push from Anchor Bird, as that's going to definitely relieve some pressure from the center. And those tank to sneakies are pretty nasty to route out. Especially these 21st Panthers, you don't get a lot of good CQC infantry. You really just have some pioneers. And that's it. And the pioneers are decent. But they're not tank to sneaky decent. Kind of hard to be. Yeah, I mean... If someone was to give you a model 12 and a bunch of self-machine guns, I think you could take on the world. You live in a very different world than I do. Yeah... I have very fun Friday nights. <laughs> I was gonna say, Canada is it seems so much more peaceful than it is in the U.S. these days. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, fuck Wolf One Ninety coming on in, dropping uh seven hundred fifty pounds. Excuse me, actually more like eleven hundred pounds. 
on that anti-tank gun, but it's, it's too late to save those two P4s, which gives that M-Chud down here an unfortunate but rather delicious edge and firepower against anything that's even in that remote area. Looking elsewhere, yeah. going back towards the King Tiger. King Tiger, is he? He's making some he's making some money moves, man. Still not sure I'd really want to be him, but he's he's definitely aggressing in and trying to cover for a little bit of these pegrims. Yeah, he's really going to, you know, use those King Tigers pretty efficiently now. Uh, oh, aggressively, I mean, because he needs to get some points. He needs to capture some flags and Really, his us as troop and Panzer Grenadiers alone are not going to be enough. I'm not sure air such troop will ever be enough for anything, mm -hmm. but um, maybe that's just me being jaded. No, uh, yeah, air such troop are just not really that good. Like, like I said before, to compare to guards, it's just terrible. And you get like the same availability roughly. Well, I think no, I think you get a bit more air such troop and availability rise, but the guards are just so. And stroke keys to just really cost efficient infantry. I know you can't see this right now, but I'm twirling my finger and, and mock. <laughs> and mock support. It's like, yay. Congratulations. Um, moderately price efficient. That's exactly what every general wants to hear. Yeah. Uh, IST is coming back up. I'm sorry? Yeah, oh no, no. Our infantry is moderately price efficient. So IST is driving forward. I think he's trying to go. Tank we Tanko. Oh, yeah. Which is a brave, brave idea. Because the Konix Tiger, as of right now, oh no, that he he wants to go ham. He's going heavy. And the, and the Konix Tiger is, is being Double a bit of a coward. Him. Shameful display. But it's going to give the eyes too free reign to push off his infantry. Unfortunately, there's no AET infantry nearby, so the eyes too has free reign of the field. Well, that's the other thing, too, is that these Pekrans in Phase C, these are the, oh, we forgot our Panzerfaust at home. Why don't we go back and mm -hmm. get it? Versions of Pekrans. Oh, my my dog ate my Panzer Shrek. Panzerfaust. Uh, he's a Teufel Hund. Yeah. Um, more bombs come down to the south, so this, this Sherman and Half-Track behind enemy lines are very quickly going to be rejoined here in just a second. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm not saying it's absurd how powerful those things are, but they are pretty dang powerful. This Focke Wolf, I don't think, I don't think he's gonna get there. Is that the right? Doesn't have enough speed. Oh, he's, he's right over the anti-aircraft net. Yeah. Question is, will he squeak through? If he does, it'll only be barely. Yeah. I don't, I'm not seeing it. Yep. There we go. Nope. He flew high, and now he's gonna be flying very low. Well, he he got a new set of wings. Um, they're mm -hmm. rather angelic, actually. They're more aerodynamic, because they have holes in them. Wow. I was going to try to go more of like an Icarus Daedalus joke there, but you, you really went there. <laughs> um, in the meantime, kind of funny. We're occasionally seeing these P4s just like amble up to the top of the hill. And I know right now he's engaging a, a Razvedka. Very lucky for him that he's got some supporting fire from this 88 way downtown. Um, but not really as as powerful as he could otherwise be yeah Ooh, but the is2 oh, is to his flank and he's get the first shot off goodbye p4 yep yep I'm not saying this is a damn the loss is full speed ahead kind of thing but this might be a damn the loss is full speed ahead kind of thing yeah he just needs yeah, Rondanu just really needs to make some sort of aggressive play now. He has these two King Tigers, which are really his main gambit here. He's got the JU-88 coming in. If he can knock out the I-2 in the center, then he should be able to bring up the KT. I, I'm going to say safely, but I think it's going to run into a Redevka squad. Well, he's not going to have the, the JU-88 is going to yeah. die, too. It's too slow. Yeah. It's too dang slow. Now, had he brought another aircraft in to cover for him, that would have been the play, I think. Mm-hmm. And then the King Tiger's gonna crest the hill by himself, and I think the Redevka might be able to get a side shot off. Here it comes. Downtown, but hit, but no kill. Don't worry, he's in the other shot. Yeah. Downtown, yep. and yeah, there we go. That's, yep. that's not how you want to be losing King Tigers, guys. 
Ideally, you don't want to lose any king tigers. I mean, those things are mm -hmm. endangered in the first place. Yeah. There's only like 500 of them. Most of them were just abandoned by our owners, you know? Yeah, which is actually really such a sad thing. I mean, most tanks Probably don't... not for the allies. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but I, was, I meant this way. I mean, like, yeah. think about it. How many King Tigers just kind of sat in the rain and thought that nobody loved them? Like, that's such a yeah. horrible, horrible thing. Like, I, I can hear Sarah McLaughlin in my mind as we speak. <laughs> Save the Tigers. <laughs> Put the arms of an angel. <laughs> For just five dollars a month, you can adopt a <laughs> Koenig Tiger. <laughs> oh man! They've been left. They've been left around in France, abandoned by our owners. <laughs> Coming out with a hat. Save the tigers. Save the king tigers. <laughs> um. Oh. And 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 now I'm sad. But um, Sorry. down to the south, we have guards kind of making some pushes here. And proving, of course, once as always, that quantity has a quality all of its own. They're able; they can they can fight out in the open against troops in cover and still give a good accounting of themselves. Yeah, the infantry rework should hopefully be fixing this. Yeah, so talk a little bit more about that. Cause I know some people out there haven't really been had the same kind of finger on the pulse. I think the the main plan of how they're planning for infantry is just revamping machine guns to. Be more deadly so you can actually suppress stuff which will hopefully stop just guard spam in an open field because if, 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 if it's bloody off this is st44 doing open field maneuvers like this should be instantly suppressed by panzergrenz and other machine gun infantry yeah it doesn't quite ask for that same kind of combined armors play that we we laud when we see it yeah but of course, I mean, that at that point, that's kind of why the combined arms play should be really that much more powerful. I wonder if we'll see a resurgence of mortars then. I hope so, because yeah, me too. I've, I've been watching a lot of war game casts, and the the use of smoke in that game from the higher level players, like, puts Steel Division to same man. They do such a good use of smoke. I think part of that, though, is because, um, you know, pot is actually legal in, oh, yeah. at that point. So back in World like, War II, they were doing methamphetamines, but you couldn't do weed. What a, what a backwards time it was. <laughs> now you can be like Oregon and have two grams of heroin whenever you want to. Mm -hmm. um, a different time, my friend, a different time. But we're seeing right now, I'm not going to say that Wonder New is crumbling, but I definitely feel like we probably could take this to a times two at like 3245. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. He's not crumbling, guys, but at the same time, his, his uh, gingerbread house here and times two um, is certainly getting a little bit more saggy. That's yeah, what happens, though. Ankri has a pretty good, like, defensive position on the central hill. He's done pretty good down south here. And yeah, it's it's kind of like the weird thing of 21st Panzer. Because they are, on one hand, a very good division. Especially if we're talking about 4v4s and 10v10s here. They're everyone's favorite pick. But in 1v1 maps, especially in more close quarters map, the infantry just doesn't really cut it. And the King Tigers are nice. But you really have to have them in an open field, like on the Such, for example. And apart from that, you have like some Panzer Fours and Shermans, but it is kind of all right. Honestly, the biggest thing that makes me annoyed about the Twenty First Panzer is that it's not Twentieth Panzer, and it's not. I don't get my light vehicle fix. Oh yeah, and all your like T thirty fours and the one IS two you get. Oh yeah, like I yeah. I I want to see that flying circus. Like that that's fun for me. Um, and just so often over here, like, like right now, like P4s, man, I have no idea how I was ever like, P4 was a decent tank. Um, I, I don't, I'm... Yeah, not like, they're not that good. No. In SC2. It's okay, in, in this matchup, they're definitely not good. Main thing is, a Sherman has three self veterancy and all two yeah. self veterancy base, and that helps out a lot in first shot, first kill. And, yeah, in, in one v one maps... Like, the Shermans do roll out supreme. In a longer range fight, the Panzer IV does have quite a bit of an advantage. It's just getting to that long range fight to begin with is pretty deadly. True. True. Uh, it's still saddening sometimes. Uh, but here we go into the last couple of seconds here. Um, Anchor Bridge has played a solid game. Like, we know we yeah. know when given the right tools, he's he can definitely do a really, really solid job here. And definitely yeah. did so. Yeah, he, he knocked out the KTs, which was... Also important. I see losing on KD, uh, but hey, it doesn't matter if you get the bloody victory. 
Well, I think Wonder Noob at the same time. I mean, he's got the whole side night and happiness thing, so, I mean, that, mm-hmm. that definitely might explain a little bit of what just happened over the last 35 minutes here. Yeah. Um, IS-2, yeah. One King Oconix Tiga, he's got one P4, and he got some infantry, but I think his major contribution was just being area denial. Yeah. Did that very just, well. Yeah, once you, like, hold on to that hill, if the enemy just crests your hill, you got them right in the position that you want them. Which is beautiful for like an offensive posture. Actually, also the sad thing is, one of the killiest things over here on the German side was the eighty-eight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, knocking out three amateurs, but that's not a very killing match in terms of individual units. Everyone no. was really, you know, doing their part for the motherland or fatherland and so whichever parental land here. Now the weird thing is, if you think about it. So many of these matches, especially on the Eastern Front, it's like a bad divorce. Like, it I mean, is. like they had a prenup, they divided Poland up, and then what happened? Well, now mommy and daddy are fighting over the pieces. Like, <laughs> I want the house. I want your stuff. Like, it was just, it was, it was an awful, awful thing. So all like the Soviet satellite states and all the minor axis allies were just like the kids. Oh yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And unfortunately, the Soviet Russia turned out to be the, the abusive mother after the fact. <laughs> she had this massive rolling pin, just started beating the crap. Oh yeah, out of the German father. Oh that yeah, that would be a fun animation. A funny animation and a really, really yeah. interesting allegory, but not one that we have time for right this second. <laughs> so while Angerberg pulling up the victory, um, congratulations to him. Unfortunate over there for Wonder Noob. Um, Folks, we, of course, as always, are going to bring you another wonderful replay over here on Thursday. Uh, but until then, I'm Con Ulrich. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.